I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, you're going to learn how to set up FreeSky F-Port. If you run FreeSky, then you've probably been a little bit annoyed that you have to run two separate wires to two separate UARTs in order to do smart port telemetry and SBUS control. It's annoying because it's just extra wires, which clutters up the build, and it takes up UARTs on the flight controller. And there's a lot of things we want to do with these UARTs, and there are only so many UARTs available. So wouldn't it be nice to get one of those back? Well, F-Port is the answer. F-Port combines smart port telemetry and SBUS control into a single wire on a single UART. That's a good thing. And I'm going to show you how to set it up. If you want to run F-Port, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to flash custom firmware to your receiver. The receivers are not currently shipping, and there's no indication that they will at any time soon ship with firmware that does F-Port out of the box. Now, I've got another video showing how to flash firmware to your FreeSky receiver, and there's a link down in the video description. When you're ready to go, go check that out. But you're also going to need to make sure that F-Port firmware is even available for your receiver. I know for a fact that it's available for the X4R SB, for the XSR, and for the RXSR. I'm going to be working with the RXSR in this video. What you want to do is you want to go search for my receiver firmware, go to FreeSky's page, go to the downloads link, and look and see if there's a, an F port version of the firmware available. If there isn't, go no further. You're out of luck. Once you flash the firmware, and again, that's not in this video, that's in the other video down in the video description. Once you flash the firmware, you're going to need to wire it up. And wiring it up is not too difficult. You're going to take the smart port wire and you're going to connect it to a UART TX pad. Now, if you're using an F3 or an F7 flight controller, you can use any UART TX pad because those, uh, those UARTs on those processors have inversion capability. And we always come back to inversion when we're talking about FreeSky. It's so annoying. And it's especially annoying when we're dealing with F4 processors because they do not have inversion on their UARTs natively. If you have an F4 processor, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to most likely use the smart port telemetry pad because that is guaranteed to have a bi-directional inverter installed on it. And if you don't know what that means, it doesn't really matter. You need to have the, a pad with a bi-directional inverter and it's the smart port telemetry pad that the manufacturer has made. Now, sometimes they'll call that tele, sometimes they'll call it SP, whatever it is, that's the one that you're going to use. So if we look at the flight controller I've got down here, this is a CL Racing F4 and I'm going to be using the Tele pad, which conveniently is already wired up. This this uh, flight controller was already wired up for uh, for regular telemetry and SBUS. So I've got the, the yellow telemetry wire from the RXSR going to the Tele pad on the flight controller and that is how it needs to be. No wiring change is going to be needed. Isn't that nice? Once you've got the F port firmware flashed to the receiver and you've got the smart port wire connected to the telemetry pad on your F4 or to any UART TX pad on an F3 or F7 processor, the next thing to do is to go over to the computer and set it up in Betaflight. Can it possibly be this simple? Let's find out. <laughs> In Betaflight, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to be on Betaflight 3.3 or higher. And we can see up here, I am on 3.3.2. If you try and do the things I'm about to show you and you like, oh, they're not there. It's probably because you're not on Betaflight 3.3. And I believe you don't need to go to the command line if you're doing the most basic form of the configuration. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the ports tab and you're going to enable Serial RX on the UART that was used for the, the, the signal wire. Bear in mind though that the signal wire for F port is the smart port wire coming out of your receiver, not the S bus wire. So it's the telemetry wire is the signal wire. Now don't let that confuse you. On this flight controller, I have that wire connected to UART 3 and I'm going to turn on Serial RX on that UART and save. And then I'm going to go to configuration. And in the receiver, I'm going to choose a serial-based receiver, and I'm going to choose FreeSky F-Port. And save. 
And can it be that simple? Let's go to the receiver tab. The receiver goes green. It's working. That's it. Is it really just that simple? Now I got lucky in that this just worked out of the box and if you're lucky, it'll work for you too. But if it's not working for you, there's a couple things that you can look into. And they involve going to the command line. If you're using an F3 or an F7 flight controller, you may need to go into the CLI and type, you may need to set serial X half duplex to on or off. By default, it's off. You may need to turn it on. This may be taken care of automatically for you when you set F port as your, your receiver, but if you've set it up according to the steps so far and it's not working, try that. The other thing you may need to do is you may need to mess with the parameter serial or RX underscore inverted. If you've done the quote unquote uninvert hack to your receiver to allow you to use an uninverted UART on an F4 flight controller, you need to set serial RX inverted to on. And this is a little bit backwards from what you might expect because this, the smart port signal is normally inverted. You have done the hack to uninvert it. So why are you setting serial RX inverted to on? The answer is that it works opposite from how you think it works, and it's really kind of dumb and confusing, but that's the bottom line. The bottom line is, if you've tried, if you've done everything so far and it's still not working, try playing with these two options. There's only four possible permutations. It should be pretty easy for you to try them all and hope that you got it right. There's one more thing we got to talk about here, and that is telemetry. Now, if you got your receiver channels to move, then F port's working and telemetry's working. So it might be a little confusing. Why why don't I see my, my voltage down here, which normally indicates to me that telemetry's working? The answer is that when you run F port, your telemetry sensors come into the the Tyrannus or the radio differently. And the bottom line is that you're going to need to rediscover them. And that means that if you've got an existing model that you like, I use this model for all of my flight controllers, all of my quads, and that's fine because they all come in the same. They're all set up the same, but I'm going to need to make another model for my F port uh, quads. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do copy model and it's going to make a new version of that model and we'll just put it here in position two and then I'm going to rename that. Okay, so now I've got a new model made for my F port receivers and what I'm going to need to do is go to the telemetry screen here and here's all my sensors from my my, my regular to, uh, smart port telemetry receiver and they're not working right. You can see there's a bunch of dashes there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, delete all sensors and then discover new sensors and those will come in. And these are the sensors that are for my for my uh, the F port sensors. The other thing you need to do is in the is that on this page? Hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's in the display page. In the display page, we're going to need to set the voltage source. The voltage source needs to be VFAS, and it was VFAS, but again, the, we need to just reset that. And once we've done that, it should be good. We've got everything working correctly. Telemetry, how about uh, Lua scripts? Lua scripts? Are those scripts working? I don't know why I'm getting 0 0.2 amps warning. So anyway, you got to reshuffle your telemetry and kind of set it up again. And it does mean that if you've got all your quadcopters on the same model, then you're going to need to uh, you're going to need to move the F port ones over to a separate model. So okay, mm, I guess I guess I'll also need to re. Yeah, I see. Now the problem is that. Folks, there's one more thing I need to tell you about, and I've been trying like five or six times to get this out without going down a huge bunny trail. Um, what you need to do is you, you need to, I'm just going to tell you what to do, okay? What you need to do is you need to copy that model, as I showed you already, and make a new model for your F port uh, quads because the telemetry is different, right? And then when you bind your quads, you're going to go into the model setup, and here where you bind, 
you're going to want to use a unique receiver number for your F port quads. Let me load this one, select the D16 model. You use a unique model number here, or a receiver number here, where it says receiver number. So all of my regular S bus. Uh, all of my regular D16 SBUS smart port receivers are going to be bound here on this model under receiver number zero. And all of my, oops, sorry, all of my F port quads are going to be bound here under the F port model as receiver number one. And that'll prevent me from ever accidentally flying an F port quad with. Uh, the S, the smart port model loaded and basically it'll just ensure that my telemetry is always working right that is after like seven tries as simple as I could make that I recommend if you're interested in hearing more about that you watch my video about the model match feature in uh, OpenTX link in the video description I hope at this point that you have F port working and if you don't have F port working, leave a comment down below. I've only done this one time now, so there could be some quirks that I'm overlooking, different flight controllers, different receivers. Definitely leave it in the comments. I'll do my best to help you. I want to take a second and remind you, this is my full-time job now. And if I've helped you in this video or in any of the many other videos I've made, if you feel like giving a little bit back, I do want to encourage you to join my Patreon. There's a link down in the video description to ways you can support me. It includes a link to my Patreon page and also a link to all of these stores that I have an affiliate relationship with. Using those affiliate links, even if you don't buy any specific product, all you got to do is click the affiliate link before you go make any purchase from any one of those vendors. Again, go to the support me page down in the video description. Helps me out immensely and it doesn't cost you anything. I appreciate whatever you can do though i love making videos for you i love helping you enjoy the great hobby of fpv i really do mean it when i say that thank you so much for watching happy flying